Greetings and welcome to this short video. My name is Craig Shallhammer. I'm the president of Orapub, and I'm going to give you a quick introduction about a tool that is related to what is called unit of work time-based analysis. Now the video is not an introduction to unit of work time-based analysis. It just takes much more than just a few minutes to really get into that. But I do want to give you a quick little intro and contrast unit of work time-based analysis with traditional time-based analysis. You see, for Oracle performance analysis, we focus on the total time typically, which is all the CPU and all the wait time related to an interval of time, perhaps let's say an hour or maybe 10 minutes. What's hidden here is that there are many, many pieces, many, many little pieces of work that have been performed, and each little piece consumes a little bit of CPU time, and potentially there's some associated wait time. In contrast, <clears throat> unit of work time-based analysis focuses on how long it takes, the response time, how long it takes to perform one piece of work. In addition to that, there's a relationship between the workload intensity and the time it takes to process a piece of work. Now this is a typical response time graph right here. So this horizontal axis is related to the workload intensity, which is sometimes called the arrival rate. And we all know that as the workload intensity increases, so does the time it takes to process each little piece of work. And so this response time graph, as it's known, is the relationship between workload intensity and the time it takes to process one little piece of work. So what will happen is if the response time increases, as the workload increases, over here we would see, in this case, we would see more wait time and potentially more CPU time as well. So there is a relationship between these two. But on the left here, this focuses on total time, where the response time approach focuses on the time it takes to process a single piece of work. Unit of work time-based analysis allows us to go from the traditional time-based approach into the unit of work or response time-based approach. The benefit of this is when we have our analysis in this type of format, we can now take advantage of the years and years of operations research, particularly queuing theory. But to get our analysis in this type of format, we have to go through a few steps. And to make this easy for you, I created a web application that's online that you can use and that's totally free. So I'm going to bring you through that process right now. So go to orpub.com and do a search for unit of work. And you'll notice here is the unit of work time-based analysis web application. There is also some PowerPoint presentations that you're welcome to take a look at. We're going to go straight into the application. And this is what it's going to look like. <clears throat> um, in order to fill this out, you can use any stats pack or AWR report or just data from your typical V$ dollar views. The key here is that the information we're going to put in here needs to be collected over a period of time. So the first thing we need to know is the snapshot duration. I'm going to use a standard stats pack report. And so the interval for this report is about 150 minutes. So I'm going to copy and paste that in here. Next, we need to determine how we are going to represent the workload on this system. And that's called the unit of work. For example, if we have a big CPU bottleneck, then we need to find out what type of work when it increases, causes the CPU subsystem to be overloaded and performance to, to degrade. Let's say there's an I.O. bottleneck because of a lot of physical reads. Well, then a good unit of work may be, from Oracle's perspective, physical reads. So let's take a look at the performance situation and then pick a good unit of work. By the way, this is one of the most complicated aspects of, of this, is figuring out a good unit of work. If we look over here, we can see that over this 150 minutes, there was a massive CPU bottleneck. In addition to that, the top weight event is clearly cache buffer chains latch contention. So a good unit of work is going to be session logical reads or logical IOs. 
because these logical IOs are going to consume CPU and eventually in the workload gets intense enough we're going to see a lot of cache buffer chain latch contention. So we're going to do a search for how Oracle quantifies and keeps track of the logical reads. And there it is. That's taken from the instant statistics. And this is the total value of all the sessions or all the logical reads that all the sessions consumed over this interval. And for the unit of work, I'm just going to put LIO for logical IOs. Okay, next we need to get the CPU consumption over this 150 minutes. <clears throat> this is uh, Oracle 10G, so we have a nice view, the time sys model view, and we can use the DB CPU statistic. This is all the CPU consumption by all the Oracle server processes over the snapshot interval. Next, we want to get the background process CPU consumption. Um, if you wonder why do we include the background time, because we have a CPU bottleneck and the background processes compete for CPU against the server process. So that's part of the entire kind of ecosystem of the whole system. Next, we need to look at the wait event situation. And I'm just going to look at the top, quote, five events. The top event is the cache buffer chain latch contention, and the time there is about 32,000 seconds. So over our interval, all the processes, server processes and background processes, um, waited for around 32,000 seconds in terms of sleep time while trying to get a cache buffer chain latch. The next, quote, event is CPU time, which is obviously not a wait event, and we're not going to include that. The next one is backup. This is related to an RMAN backup writing to tape. Now this is important. This is a CPU bottleneck and we've checked this out and this wait event right here in this particular situation is not consuming any substantial CPU resources. In fact, it doesn't affect the users and it's really not affecting the system from a performance situation. So we will not include this time. The next wait event is latch free and that's about 1800 seconds and that represents all the uh, the sleep time related to trying to get a latch that has not been specifically named which is unfortunate for us but that's the way it is. Next is this latch related to cache buffer handles and now we're down to relatively small amounts of time at 931 and that's going to be good enough for this demo. Now we need to select what type of system that we want to model or what's going on. What is the bottleneck? Where are we getting stressed? It's the CPU subsystem, not the I.O. subsystem. So we're going to keep this at CPU and we'll, we will do normal precision. Now what I'm going to do is when I click go is that all these inputs uh, are going to be used to calculate some additional figures which will allow us to create a response time graph. Here's a summary of all the inputs and here are the outputs. There's a lot here that I could get into, but I'm not. That's what my lectures and training classes are for. But I do want to talk to you about the arrival rate. The arrival rate is calculated by taking all the work, which is in this case is all the logical IOs, and divide that by our snapshot duration, which was about 150 minutes. So on this system, on average, over the 150 minute interval, there was 145 logical IOs processed each millisecond. And that's what that means. Now, the, the 145 figure is going to be important, and that's why I wanted to highlight that. Now, in addition to looking at the outputs, I created a link to Wolfram Alpha, and that is going to graph our response time curve for us. If you haven't spent any time with uh, Wolfram Alpha, you need to because it is it's amazing. So our graph was created for us. <clears throat> this is a response time graph. So we are operating right about here. But let me tell you how I knew that. As I started in, in the short video here, the horizontal axis is the workload intensity. That is the arrival rate. The vertical axis is the response time. This is how long it takes for Oracle to process one single piece of work. And in our situation, the unit of work is a logical I.O. So you can see that this graph, this response time graph, visually 
tells us the relationship between the workload intensity and time. And in our specific situation, the workload intensity, the arrival rate was 145, and that translates into a response time around 0 0.05. Now, in this situation, the, uh, most of the interesting stuff happens down here, so I want to change the scale um, of this graph. So I only want to go up to 0.1. To do that, I can simply go to the equation here that was used to call Wolfram Alpha, and I'm going to set it like this. And I'm going to have it recalculate, and you'll see that the graph has essentially now been stretched. So we're at about 145, and that's the response time right here. Now, about the response time curve, this is a fantastic way to communicate to other people what's going on. Most people, managers, technical people, anybody can tell you when you're in what's called the elbow of the curve, they just feel that that is a bad place to be, that performance is not good there. And also, most people, they just inherently understand that down here, that is a good place to be. And you can use that to your advantage. For example, you can tell people that this is where you were over that 150 minutes, and that's a bad place to be. Performance is not good. Then you can say, what we want to do is to get out of the elbow of the curve. And once you tell them that you want to go from the bad area to the good area, they are already asking and thinking in their heads, well, how are we going to go from the bad to the good? That's when you explain to them your performance solutions. So it's a perfect setup. And if somebody presses you and asks you, well, how is this graph created? Remember that this is based on proven math that's been around for years. And here is the actual formula right here for creating this particular graph. Okay, so there's a real quick introduction to you about unit of work time-based analysis and this specific tool. Um, if you want to get some more information about it, just go to, uh, just go to orpub.com. And the class that I focus most on this is going to be my advanced performance analysis class. Because if you've been following me so far, you can tell that there's a lot of questions that are probably popping up in your head right now, how you can effectively use this. And that, then that's covered in my advanced analysis class. I also will talk about this in my research seminar as well, particularly because this type of analysis is a fantastic way to analyze research results. And that's why I talk about it in that class. Okay. Hey, thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the video.